Digital agents crawl Maya running errands for masters. The world blossoms in an elaborate display that can only exist in a virtual world. Every language is known to you, every question you have can be answered. But the omnipresence of Maya has its downsides. Conspiracies leave digital breadcrumb trails. Info warriors hack news feeds and augmented reality to question the very concept of truth. Welcome to Warlore. In this video, you'll learn about Maya, the mesh network that forms the bedrock of modern civilization. We'll explore how Maya allows for the information warfare, hacking, and connectivity that is so unique to Infinity. So what is Maya? Well, it's the infrastructure for the human sphere, far more integrated than the internet could ever have been. Food packaging tells you exactly how much milk you have left, and when it's time to reorder. Every room has sensors to detect air, pressure, and radiation. Digital channels provide media, news, and entertainment. Anyone with the smallest bit of savvy is armed with up-to-the-minute data. Your social cloud, the totality of your public persona, helps you find common ground with strangers on the street or on the other side of the planet. Maya was not built overnight. In the 21st century, interconnectivity between devices exploded at an exponential level. Protocols to handle the new normal were a necessity. At the same time, early off-world colonies needed fast and flexible networking solutions. Living on the moon means you can't rely on a data center in Austin. This led to the normalization of mesh networks. In such a setup, every system on the network creates a wireless connection with every other system within range. Local traffic is transmitted using a flooding technique until redundant, best available pathing is established, creating a fractal and ever-evolving routing map. Encryption is built into Maya communications, data is secured against snooping by other systems on the network, and public keys are embedded into users. Hyperledgers, next-gen distributed blockchains, allow for trusted transactions. Even the nomads, who distrust Maya, use similar technology for their own network, Arachne. More on that later. Maya is so all-encompassing that it would be difficult to use without a guide. Luckily, you have one. Your Geist is your personal operator, a virtual assistant that knows you and your preferences. It's grown up with you. It's an entity whose unique specialty is you. To use YouTube, you use a phone, desktop, or fridge. To interface with Maya, you use your comlog. Most people have a comlog implanted in a forearm or even in their brain. Retinal implants or glasses allow you to see AR or augmented reality. This means that you're seeing the real world with computer-generated information overlaid atop of it. We're talking sight, sound, sometimes touch, occasionally even more. Most users have common functions mapped to their dial. Common functions are performed with eye contact or touch. They aren't always radial interfaces. Yujing prefers a long, deeper UI, while Pano and Nomad dials are circular. Touch commands expand past your comlog and dial. Objects that exist in the physical world are identified by cameras and sensors and assign meme tags. In this way, objects with no computerization at all can still have AR displays and a user interface. Double tap a decorative vase to see its place of manufacture and history. Double tap someone's palm and transfer some basic social permissions. Stare at a graffiti tag to reveal top secret information left as a dead drop. While you're walking down the street, you'll see people's halos. A halo is the part of themselves that they make publicly visible. A minimalist display, or maybe an avatar, with variations from public or private settings. Don't get hacked and display your adult profile when you're at a job interview. Still, the convenience of being able to share some basic info about yourself on request means that most people have a halo visible. Someone without one is either up to something or lacking. Maybe an ATEC. People who don't have Maya connections, or who don't have comlogs, will just not have the same experience. Without Maya access, you'll miss the street signs. Have you been hacked? Got no comlog or an outdated model? Good luck ordering food, much less hailing a cab to get somewhere else. You don't have to physically be in a space to share information, though. Ghosting refers to holographically projecting yourself into the AR of other people who are somewhere else. If you want to go for lunch with someone, they can join you virtually. Your AR feed never knows the difference, projecting them as they walk alongside you and having them sit down at a table to order food. You can pull reality as well, which means using video feeds and other sources to blend your locations together. 
AR can project sound nobody else hears and visuals nobody else sees right to you. You can even move a video to your mind's eye if you have the right implants, so that nothing disrupts your vision. Sure, there's the constant mist of AR spam and ads, but your geist can filter most of those out. These tools mean that people can immerse themselves in more media than ever. This is usually derived via Maya channels, the successor to applications like YouTube or Quibi. They're platform agnostic. Maya transmits them to you. Basically, everything on the internet and more can be found in the form of Maya channels. Well, there are plenty of state-run channels. The Yujing Ministry of Information is as popular as Maya as it is mandatory. There's also fiction, like The Adventures of Candy Double, as well as Myrmidon Wars, an animated series that's half propaganda and half anime. Some individuals have no compunctions about broadcasting their lives. If you're stuck on a train, you can watch a Pano Evercaster go for a swim in the depths of Varuna. If you don't like audio or video, you can also use Maya for socialization. In addition to ghosting and communications, Maya has clusters, the great-grandchildren of Usenet and forums and Discord. These communities, public and private, are united by a common mindset. Usually, these clusters are places that you visit. Some cluster cults are omnipresent. Joining on means that other members, or the virtual environment of the cluster, are constantly being pulled into the landscape of your AR. There is joy in having access to your friends at all times. In some cases, though, a cluster might go cult and never disconnect. It's seen as a little odd. Staying in a Skype call 24 hours a day is pretty unusual. Conversely, some activities seem very normal. Multiplayer AR games like Cloak and Dagger or Garfield Go can see people role-playing out a scene while on the street, or gaining points by eliminating a rival faction, even if you're just pointing your finger and running around in a park. Of course, Maya isn't used only for communication or entertainment. This is an era of quantum computing, but since the only AI in existence, legally, is LF, Quantronic warfare is performed by humans. A data sphere is a shared network of coordinated experiences and information. Think of it like a Venn diagram. All of Maya is one data sphere, but there are countless other spheres that intersect with it. Even military data spheres need Maya connections to function properly. A hacker has a series of goals when engaging in info war. Get into the target or connect to their network, reach the virtual zone that contains the target, and then use programs or tools to breach the target. Other goals, of course, include avoiding getting linked, that is, traced back from a system operator to the other side. Most com logs have a failsafe that would ever prevent you from harming your owner. Of course, um, a neural implant com log, the kind that a hacker needs to be effective, is vulnerable to some pretty serious damage. If a hacker isn't interested in brain blasting someone, they still have a massive suite of tools. They can record sights and sounds near their target. They can research someone's digital shadow, that is, information on them that they don't broadcast. Surveillance footage, chat logs, receipts, and a billion other tiny interactions make up a person's footprint in the Quantronic world. To get a stable connection, it's best to be close to the target. Repeaters that you're connected to can make getting connection faster and easier, although Evo Hacking Tech allows a hacker safely in an extra niche to contribute to information warfare. As far as wars go, there is still a cold war between the two biggest data spheres. You know Maya now. I should also mention Arachne. Arachne is the nomad alternative to Maya. It shouldn't work. It's slower and it's constantly under electronic assault by Aleph. It's a darknet, piggybacking off of Maya nodes. A separate network even more decentralized than Maya. Arachne is as strange as it is useful. Aleph refers to Borges and the Kabbalah, a point from which all things can be seen. Arachne is a web weaver, chaotic, jealous, non-linear. The network itself was based on the brain patterns of long-dead Christian saints and martyrs. No one asked how the observance came up with the neural patterns of Saint Stephen. Faith is a question of mystery. Aleph hates mysteries. The Arachne network is unpredictable. Maya guides your searches. If you search for something, you'll get all the responses that 99% of all people want. But to find the weird stuff, you have to wade through those algorithmic search results. Arachne has no easy search engines. Geists don't always know how to use it. It's a wild frontier of content, legal and illegal. While Channel Oxide proudly appends only on Maya to every episode of the Go Go Marlene show, most nomads would be quick to add, unless pirated. 
Spending time on Maya means you have access to all the security I mentioned earlier. Arachne has no such encryption, but it does have the appeal of utter autonomy from LF. The Nomad Nation uses its commercial activities to spread hidden Arachne nodes across explored space. Maya isn't just the internet, it's everywhere. It's a decentralized internet of things, it's virtual and augmented reality, and for the people of the human sphere, it's the future. One of the main reasons it works so well is, of course, LF, but we're saving discussion on the AI for next time. Unlike the people of the human sphere, we don't have geists. We've got no virtual assistant to bring you content, unless you want to depend on YouTube's insane algorithms. So it would mean a lot to me if you subscribed. A like or a comment are actually even better. Dislikes work too. Anything that helps me get this channel to more wargame fans. And you know what? Give me a dislike if you're a Nomad player and you think Arachne is better than Maya. We both know it's slower. But thanks for watching either way, and I hope that you'll tune in for my next video.